look how prevalent the bobbling is here. Played an upright. You played an upright that had bobbling hammer. <laughs> the, the big issue is, and I and I uh, filmed this earlier in a different angle too. But the big biggest issue is right in there. Yep. What we have is that the key is going down, and we've reached the bottom of the keystroke, and the jack, which is this, I'll point to it here. The jack here can't clear out from from there. Okay. All the way, and so the hammer, and, and this isn't catching on this green right here. Okay. And so it's just free to just bounce. The main thing is that since they set the key height in the factory, the key was traveling further initially. And then since it's a new piano, things have settled. And if you even look back at the key height, you can see in this area where we have the most problem, the, keys, the key height, if you look at this very front lip, it kind of dips. Uh-huh compared to the ends, you know, the ends are a little bit higher. Sure. And yeah, we could take the time to totally level out the keys <laughs> and everything or change the dip. But with an upright, often the game is just make it work and most people will be super happy. Yeah, Myself absolutely. included, so. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is just a little practice piano. Yeah, and um, so I think anyone could tackle this and I already kind of, went through like how to get things out. But I was gonna say, there's another problem on this, which is also common with new pianos, new upright pianos. Screws will get loose. You've got a metal screw in wood, things expand and contract, it's gonna get loose. So check this out. This, you hear that rattle? And it's on my release that I hear it. Rat Sometimes you'll hear a click or rattle on the attack. If you hear a click on the attack, it's because this screw in the front is, um, is loose, has gotten loose. Okay. If it's on the release, it's because the screw of this bottom part, which is the whipping, which is on the back side, is loose. So we'll need to tighten that, but I can do that afterwards. Let's fix the bobbling hammers. Sure. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna lift out some keys. And if you take a look at the top there, you can see those screws that are right there. Those Phillips screws. Yep. There's two boards, right? A board right here in the middle where the keys balance on the balance rail, and then there's a board right here, the front rail, that stops how far they, it uh -huh. limits how far they go down. So there's Phillips screws right here? Yeah, that there's one. one there. There's a corresponding Phillips screw on this board here. Okay. To raise the height, we need to raise this board. Oh, okay. So we're gonna do that in a wholesale fashion. Okay. Brought my drill to speed things up. Nice. Because sometimes these screws are running with such tight torque. You could do it by hand, but it might kill your hand, so this is way faster. So I'm just gonna zip this maybe to kind of a medium torque so I don't strip out the screw. Just zip that out. There's gonna be probably five screws across. Now I found, I think with the Yamaha, I found a trick where I put my screwdriver here, which I got this screwdriver from a Yamaha class, and about at the end of it is where the next screw is gonna be. Oh, um, nice. Uh, but in this case, see, look, I'm wrong. <laughs> but, um, Pretty close. Sure. No, actually, maybe maybe that was. Yeah, that's close. Just about right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So on a Yamaha, that'll work, but if you're upright something else, it won't. Sure. When you lift these out, if you're worried about breaking something, just just kind of cradle them. Let the front come out first. Just make sure you don't yank. You know, you can put these out of the way. Okay. And then just kind of gently take those out. Nice. And you're not. You know, they'll go back in. If it's a new panel, they're numbered really clearly. If it's not a new panel, just you know, be careful. Yeah. Let's see if my trick works again. The screwdriver. Yep, there's the screw. I, I did work on a lot of Yamaha, so that helps, you know, when you're seeing the same piano over and over again. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, I don't care what kind of upright it is, it's going to probably have these issues. Sure. You're a, an expert in Yamahas, because that not that how you got started? Yeah, I worked for a Yamaha dealer for a number of years. Did a training at uh, Yamaha USA, which is in Buena Park, California. That was a lot of fun. Nice. Well, while you're removing those keys, this is a, a Yamaha B3. This is just a little practice piano. And um, can you maybe explain the difference between the U3 and the B3, if you know? 
I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, a U3 would be taller than this, supposedly, I think. Okay. If I'm wrong on that, I'm wrong. It's been a while since I've worked for the Omaha dealer. They've changed all the numbers and names. This J in front of the serial number, I believe, means it was made in Jakarta, Indonesia. Okay. Whereas the U series was all manufactured in Japan. Okay. Yamaha's really good at quality control. I was working when they started introducing pianos out of this Indonesia factory. They started labeling them Cable Nelson just to make sure that their quality was coming out the way they wanted before they slapped their name Yamaha on it. If you ask any technician, I think for quality control, they win the prize. Awesome. Okay, so I've uncovered these five screws. Your piano might have four, it might have five. If you have no idea where these screws are, I mean, you could take all the keys off, but you don't have to. Sometimes if you just lift up the front and you kind of locate where these front rail screws are, uh -huh. the balance rail screw is probably close to that on sure. most designs. Okay. So we're loosening all of these because we want to stick a shim under this rail and basically raise it up, raise the key height up. And what that'll do, if the key's higher, then it's got farther to go down. And it's just a little bit, but it'll make it to where everything goes through the whole motion that needs to occur here for that jack to escape out under and be free. And it'll allow this catcher right here with the, with the yellow leather to be caught. Sure. By so this we're increasing check. key dip. Right now it's too shallow, is that right? Yep, we're, we're, we're raising key height and increasing key dip. I'm just gonna do it with some business card stock. That's pretty much standard thing. Okay. And if you look at it really carefully, there's already some uh, card stock underneath there, under that rail. Yeah, so is it, let's see, it's not this, right? I'm seeing a piece right oh. here. Okay, yep. That's probably factory. Okay. Okay, cool. so it's not like you're doing something weird to the piano or this is some strange fix. This is totally normal. <laughs> okay. The thickness that I raise it here you're going to times that by about two, and that's how far the front of the key is going to lift. Okay. And you're like, well, is it too high? We are limited by a couple things. This rail goes on the top here, right? So obviously we can't raise these so high that it would, you know, run into that rail. Also, it would look ugly. You'd see space under there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the space under the keys there. So. A good number to have in mind is about 18 to 22 millimeters above this front piece called the key slip. And you measure up to the bottom of the key top lip right there. Perfect. So 20 millimeters is probably where we're going to hit. And that's, you know, I like to go in the middle of that. It looks best. It works well. Okay. Okay. So on this one, there may be a few problems wrong with your new upright or your old upright that's bobbling. Uh -huh. um, and it's all related to the same thing. It's how far the key goes down versus how far the hammer's traveling and whether or not that ratio is correct. Okay. So, but if you address this key issue first, you're going to get the most bang for your buck. It's going to make the biggest difference in fixing this problem and could totally resolve it. Even if, other things, which those other things, I'll just point them out really quick. These hammers over time, they kind of settle into this green felt. You might see some indentations if the, if the mm -hmm. lighting's good there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over time, they kind of settle in. Okay. And so they get further away from the strings. So the hammer has to go farther than it did. So sometimes one correction that you need to do is to raise this, you know, with putting a shim under here so that these are back to the correct distance from the string. The other thing that'll happen that contributes to the bobbling is this screw down here, this capstan screw, which actually isn't a capstan screw, but it's a, we'd still call it that, right? It makes contact with the Whitman and it lifts the assembly here. If this felt gets settled in underneath here, you'll see like a cupping. If, you, if we were to pull this upside down, we're not gonna see it here, but that squishes and compacts down and so you'll get where you push the key and you're not feeling the weight of the hammer yet. You'll get what we call lost motion in the key travel. That will also contribute. Now on this piano, the lost motion's good. I didn't, I didn't even measure this distance for the hammers to the strings because I know the bigger deal is the keys. Sure. And so even if you don't want to mess with those others, 
you could do this to your piano and it would be working just wonderfully. So I'm going to go two cards with, I want to get a little bit aggressive with this one. Okay. But I don't want to have to do it twice. Plus I think that's going to be right. When I'm prepping a new upright in the store and the dealer tells me, I just don't want any problems. You know, when it goes out to the customer's <laughs> home, I know I've got to kind of load it with a little extra key high, a little extra this, anticipating that things are going to settle. So I'm just going to fold my card, take the screw out, and I'm going to pry up on this bar. I don't know the best thing to do, but... So I'm pushing out that old one, but I want to make sure I don't push it out all the way. I want them stacked on top of each other. So now I've got my white card, and then you see their old mm -hmm. uh, cardboard colored piece there. Awesome. I'm going to do that on each of these points. Sometimes if one section's a lot lower than the rest of the keyboard, I'll kind of level the keys too by maybe putting two cards here and one here and three, you know, you yeah. can do that, it works. Um, in this case, though, I'm just gonna do it uniform because we were having an issue in the treble too. So, slip that under there. And then I need, I need more cards. <laughs> Which are very cheap, so you don't need many tools to do this. That's why I think this is a great DIYer. If you have an upright and you just, you just had it with the bobbing hammers. Yeah, this looks like something I would even it's totally manageable. be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> I tried tuning a piano and broke a string my first try, so that shows you how, you know, handy I am. <laughs> I think it's like another tuner told me, oh, it was years before I ever did that. <laughs> but I will say the tuner was uh, an, an old AccuTuner that was malfunctioning, so... I have a little excuse, not not a lot. <laughs> but this one looks manageable. Just unscrewing a few things and putting some business cards under. Yeah, with any screw in a piano, you want to anticipate this piano wants, we want this to last for decades. Right. We usually want to run that where it gets in the same threads in that hole. But when you're punching it through cards, that's hard to feel. Okay. And these screws are usually tight enough that I don't worry about it as much it's not going to be adjusted that much over the life of the piano maybe two three times and then it'll be set and it won't have to be bothered so i think we'll be okay i mean i, I can try and turn this backwards but yeah i can't feel when it goes in the new in the old thread so i'm just going to go ahead and run it in my cards wanted to move around so i'm going to pull those in place there okay okay The cards will spin, so I'm basically just holding the cards, keeping them from spinning. My left hand is what I'm doing there. Sounds good. So now, even now we can... No bobbling. Awesome. Okay. Now if we look at the jack down here, as you'll see a gap now between that yellow little felt. Yeah. Right? And I, as I push the key harder, it kind of goes further out or... Mm -hmm. So plenty of clearance now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fix this B that's a loose screw. Now usually I would just tighten all the screws. Uh, you know, when I find that problem on one, it's gonna be happening on more. So usually with the action in, you know, and a screwdriver that kind of gets skinny after the after it grabs, I'll get in here and I'll just scoot the jacks aside and tighten each one of those all the way along the whole the whole action so times 88 right uh -huh. but what i want to fix is the other screw that's that's rattling there so i'm going to go ahead and just disengage that clear these out of the way and just loosen these knobs now this one don't worry i'll find those <laughs> <laughs> um this you know you might this is where you might be saying oh scared to do this but honestly if you just kind of follow what I'm doing on the video here you'd probably be okay I'm gonna go ahead and pull the, you still have packing material in here so 
Hasn't been a whole lot of prep work done on this. I just came down here to find my lock washer that dropped down here. A lot of times if you have an old upright and it's missing damper felt or there's a hammer broken or a street, <laughs> just take this bottom board off and you'll, you'll usually find it just still sitting under there. You okay, know. nice. So now those are removed. You can just rock this back. Uh, there's a nice gap right here. I like to grab with my finger here. I'm not going to break anything. Okay. And then on the treble end, the same thing. And then I'll just lift it out. Sometimes the sustain pedal rod there on the left will get caught, but... Okay. It's not a little too close. So that B, you know, where was that B? It was seven notes into this top section. So, so theoretically this screw right here, let's see if I can wiggle this and show it. It doesn't wiggle, but sometimes it'll visibly wiggle. Okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this screw. I put these parts out of the way. No, it's good. I got like almost a quarter turn on that, so it's okay. definitely loose. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead while I'm back here and tighten the rest of these because they're going to do it next week if they're not right now. Some of these are tighter than others, but I'm getting a little bit of turn on all of them. It's okay to set the action on its end like this because it's got a metal bracket down there. Okay. Now we hit where we already tightened there. Okay. I tighten these things too because they, they can loose, be loose and rattle too. Okay. okay, so I'll go this way halfway down and then it's just easy to grab underneath. Okay. Turn it over. Then we can do the other half of those. When I'm holding it this way, I can grab the dampers out of the way like this. Or what I want to do actually is I usually grab it like this and that gets these spoons. They call those spoons for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just tighten down to the middle. Once you do this once, twice, to a piano, it's it's not going to need it again, really. Okay. Unless you're in real extreme humidity changes, you know, that you're going through. Sure. And this is, you think, well, you're just tightening screws. Well, yeah, we're keeping the parts in place, but it's a bigger deal than that, too, especially like on a Yamaha. In, it increases the efficient energy transfer from your finger all the way to the hammer hitting the string. There's no lost energy in a wobbly part. And so you can go through like an old Yamaha and tighten the screws like this, and all of a sudden it has all this tone that you didn't have before. You can voice the piano by tightening screws almost. Okay, this is important putting this back, but so you can't see where it goes, that's fine. Just set it back here. You'll be all right. Okay. Some pianos have another brace right here. But if I set it there initially, then I can kind of lift up on this metal bracket and I can find my my little screw that I'm aiming for. So oh, in this yeah. case I need to flip up on both ends, scoot it over a little bit, and set it on there. So the feet are on those screws on both sides now. Okay. And like I said, sometimes there will be one in the middle, sometimes there will be four. Mm -hmm. They kind of streamline this design. Now I'm not gonna make the same mistake again, let these Washers fly away, <laughs> but just replace them back and just make sure that it screws all the way back on, and the regulation will be the same. Okay. Now, um, you'll always want to do this too. Look at this. This damper right here, see how it's away from 
the strings. It's not sitting in its grooves. Mm -hmm. These dampers that have these double wedges, you always just, after you put that in, you want to just go like this, let them seat again. Okay. And different pianos have different number of those, but we have to reconnect the sustain pedal. Otherwise, okay. this piano will not be fun to play. So I just get down here and look up and I pull this rod off the bottom anchor. Now I can stick it up in this insert. There. And then in the bottom, we've got this hole right there where it can receive it. Okay. You can feel the pedals and confirm, yep, it's lifting the dampers away from the strings. And you want the pedal to be able to move about 10, 15 millimeters before it really does anything and then engage the dampers. Gotcha. Otherwise you can get ringing dampers. Then we can't forget the soft pedal if you want to use that. Gotta hook that up. And uh, this soft pedal, look, it doesn't do anything for a little bit. Uh -huh. We don't need that gap for this, for okay. the soft pedal. Okay. So down here, there's a wing nut. I'm just gonna tighten that. That lowers this point, raises the back of that lever and it's bringing it closer up. Watch that move closer. I'll move it away. I'll move it closer by turning that wing nut. There, you don't want it lifting the, 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 that rail yet, but just ready to. I see. And that usually feels pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so we got the keys on. We don't have any bobbling. Let's see what the, the number is here real quick in the area where it was worst, we've got 18 millimeters from the top of the key slip to the bottom of that lip. Mm -hmm. So we just got into that zone that I was telling you about. So these keys were really low, right? Okay. But it works fine. I'm not worried. I wouldn't at this point, oh, I need to take it to 20 uh -huh. because then you have mm -hmm. too much gap at the bottom of the mm -hmm. key stroke. You want to just hit it just right. So I see. With how much gap there is here, I, I know from experience that's just going to be plenty. Okay. So, and the way the piano was regulated before, you're actually kind of restoring it to that. So you don't have to feel like, oh no, I messed up all these other things. And I mean, occasionally you might get into something and you might need your technician to help you out, but I think this is really doable. So stick in these. Yeah, you have to chuck that upper. Okay. Sticking these back in, whatever you feel comfortable with, you might want to just start with one. Lift this here, set the back down, and then just let it gently get onto this guide pin where the hole, where that hole is. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Just gently let it fall down, okay? If it's tight, don't worry. Some pianos aren't, keys aren't quite eased all the way, but that's not as big a deal right now. And once you kind of have one in place, let it float down like this. And if any of you want to know what easing the keys, we have a whole segment on our prepping a Steinway series about yeah. easing the keys that you can check out. Just don't force anything and you won't break anything. If you feel any resistance, just ease up. When you're training someone new, uh, do they tend to break things a lot more often or not really? In some, with some actions and repairs, you know there's more of a risk. Uh -huh. Something like this, um, I wouldn't be as worried about. I don't, sure. usually, I don't <laughs> usually see anyone break anything doing this part. Even if you're worried about taking the keys in and out, I've never had an apprentice break anything taking the keys in and out. Sure. It works great. Okay, so this B is uh, this is the one that was rattling on the release. This B that's a that loose screw. Now you totally solved. So, like, you know, if you've got a new piano on the release, you're getting this rattling. If it's an upright like this, that's the problem. That screw in the back. So, perfect. Great. Awesome. So yeah, you fixed your upright piano, way to go. <laughs>